that says, wait a minute, account X belongs to bank Y. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we, we take the bank Y number and we go, we put it into the bank ID, we hit enter again in the world's best hacking tool ever, Firefox. Uh, and we get this error message again. Wait, wait, if you want to use bank Y, that belongs to client Z. Here's the ID. Okay, cool. So we take that number, plug it back into the URL, and all of a sudden we get access to every single bank account on the entire system. Uh, the system actually had no notion of authorization built in. It checked whether or not if you were logged in. That's you know, kind of nice. So we said to our banking customer, uh, we were not working for the ASP, we were working for one of their customers who was then forwarding along our reports. And uh, you know the, uh, the banking customer was not excited, nor was the ASP when we told them they kind of had to redesign their entire application. So we figured that there was going to take them at least you know a couple of weeks, if not months. But it was interesting. Uh, roll back. What was interesting is that the, when they first came came back to us, no roll back. When they first came back to us, they said, "Okay, uh, we fixed the issue. Please retest." So we retested it, and uh, roll, roll back one more. No, 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 back, not forward, back. <laughs> Super hackers, yes. <laughs> All right, so we. Uh, we got back and said, please retest this issue. So we retested it and no error message, right? Their first fix actually just commented out the HTML. So we utilized the great view source, found the code in there still, and we're still able to do the exact same thing. So, uh, so that's what happened. So now, now we can roll forward. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good job, by the way. Throw <laughs> So the ASP says, don't worry about it. This is a, an issue. We'll get on it. But in the meantime, the back end business controls will prevent these issues. So should you get into somebody's, somebody's account, you can't wire transfer money out of their account because we have controls around this sort of thing. So we said, OK, who are we to argue? So a few weeks later, here's what happens. Can I, can I do it now? Yes. <laughs> we get a check in the mail sent to White Hat it addressed to WH test in the amount of uh, $2. <laughs> I guess the business controls weren't exactly, uh, you know, what they were meant to be. All right, so we said we sent this over to the bank, you know, because you know that's how we were testing it, just between our own accounts. So next slide. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, our banking customer notified us that seventy thousand dollars was illegally wire transferred from one of another customer account to an Eastern European country. The money was not recoverable because they didn't notice until a lot long, long after, and the ASP eventually lost a customer. But we have no idea how many uh, other users were affected. Really easy. Number rotations. No need to be that sophisticated. Trading on insider information. So there was a number of you in the financial industry, yeah? How many of you are in publicly held or traded organizations? How many of you buy stock in that stuff? <laughs> well, why is that funny? So an insider is defined as someone with a fiduciary role within a company, a corporate executive, an investment banker, or an attorney. How many in this room fit that opinion or that description? Who's, who's going to admit that? <laughs> this guy. We'll get to it. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> So one of the big things about this whole SOX thing and protecting, <coughs> protecting this type of information that is so very sensitive is, um, well, marketing is a big part of it, but also releasing things on time. There are requirements and rules around how you publish this information. So Business Wire is an organization that a lot of these organizations use to publish information. But they put an embargo date on this, and it's really cryptically hidden. I'm standing in front of it. The data is not public because it's on the internet, but it's not linked in. Now, the only thing we're checking for in this scenario is a website with a very predictable URL. What's happening here is just simply a month, day, and a year. And this little thing on the end that counts. Now, before granting access to this press release, there's something the system requires. You're supposed to just log in. That's authentication, right? Just because it's not linked or not visible doesn't mean it's there. Predictable resource location. An Estonian financial firm discovered this. 
It was a brilliant move. And just because it wasn't linked didn't mean they couldn't find it. And they managed to make some really smart bets. There was no sense of authorization. It's there. You can have it. We're just not going to tell you where it's at. Eight million dollars trading on this information. SEC flipped out <laughs> a little bit. So we started off with you know bragging rights. We're up to eight million. Go ahead and give me another slide. Jump change. You're buying drinks later. <laughs> so the trail in this case went cold. This is a, a little bit older story. The trail went cold here. And we don't know whether or not this is insider trading because they never said. So let's take this a step further. A Ukrainian hacker broke in and stole some gloomy, bad information. And just before this information hit the market, they made a bet. $42,000, it's a casual and it might be chump change for you, a bet that the stock would fall. It's a lot to any Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, it is. So what happens here? The stock falls very sharply. The hacker profits $300,000. Now, part of this whole SEC thing is the ability to flip little red flags and interrupt and stop movie. They freeze the assets. What's wrong with the SEC freezing these assets? Is this insider training? trading? They're outside the company now, right? The funds had to be released because this wasn't an insider. It was a criminal attack. They broke in and stole information. They profited a lot of money. But the thing is, they had to release it. This is not the SEC's place to prosecute. It had to be released. So it says there, uh, the alleged stealing and tracking or hacking and trading does not amount to a violation of securities laws. <laughs> so what came all the way out of this was the time speculated it wasn't worth pursuing because um, there's certain countries we just can't enforce these types of laws in. What's it called when uh, a reporter gets a lead on a story? They're going to get the scoop, right? They're going to dig this out. Well, the pump and dump scans have evolved. There was a particular scenario not too distant past where an old story on the South Florida Sun Sentinel's website for whatever reason, got a lot of hits. This particular situation was where um, United Airlines filed for bankruptcy. A bunch of hits. I don't know how you generate hits. What, what, what is that you do on the browser? What's that hacking button? That re I think reload, right? Reload, refresh? I don't know. It's one of those hack uh, sophisticated things. They don't teach me this stuff at White Hat. So <laughs> there were a bunch of hits on this. And inside of their site, the rank of that story got elevated. A, uh, certain Google index process happened and it appears on Google News because it's apparently it's apparently an important and very exciting story. So what happens is a Bloomberg reporter is researching on bankruptcies, bankruptcies, sees this, translates this, and publishes this as news. This is years old. What happens? We talked about betting on futures just a moment ago. The, talk, the stock tanked. $12 to $3. In how long? One day. day. They had to stop halt trading. <laughs> How many of you could script a reload or a get request? Is that seriously hacking? So it took a couple of days for their stock to recover. Guys, it doesn't get a whole lot simpler than this. So instead of the pump and dump scam, we're going to call it the poop and scoop. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're, we've gone from zero and we've gone up to, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, seven figures uh, per incident. So we're going to.